We will now consider a second set of decomposition examples with geometric vectors. And you will notice that compared to the first video, I simply switched the vectors C and A. So now the task is the same, but the vectors are new. The task is to decompose the new vector C and the old vectors D, E, and F with respect to the new pair of vectors A and B. Of course, the vector B is the same as before, but the vector A is new. And this set of examples is more complicated than the ones from the first video. Why is that? Well, the reason is clear. It's because we no longer have that nice 90 degree angle that really helped us in decomposition by sight. So these examples will challenge your ability to evaluate linear combinations to a greater degree than earlier examples, which is good. All right, so let's see how it goes. Let's start with the vector C. Let me step over here and maybe step partially out of the shot. So the vector C. So to see what linear combinations of A and B produces C, you have to be pretty good at subtracting vectors because it's A minus B that points in the right direction. So the key to getting to C is realizing that A minus B points in the right direction but is too short. It's half the length of C. So A minus B doesn't cut it. We need to take twice that twice a minus b. And since we can multiply expressions like that out by distributivity, the result is 2a minus 2b. So here is the linear combination, 2a minus 2b. And we're done with our first more complicated example. And of course the key remains that these vectors are arranged in a very special way. You might begin to wonder, well, what am I going to do if they're not arranged in any special way? Well, an answer to that question is coming in just a couple of videos. Let's move on to the next vector, the vector D. Actually, the most complicated of all of the examples on the board. And there are two ways in which you can do D. That's just a hint, because I would really like for you to pause the video and see if you can get the vector D as a linear combination of A and B on your own. I think you'll find it to be very gratifying if you get the numbers on your own. But here are the two ways that I would do it. Way number one. Well, I would just start playing around with A and B and see whether I can, by trial and error, find a path to D. And here we're, here's where I will use a little bit of my everyday intuition. And I'll think of B as a vertical vector. And so with A, I'll have to travel until I'm lined up with D because I can use the vector B to travel along this vertical direction. So how am I going to do it? Well, I have to go in this direction to line myself up with D vertically. How far do I have to go? And I think it's one, two. So it's minus two A, minus two A. Let me make it as accurate as I can. Puts me right here. And once I'm here with minus two A, I can back I can use B to get back to D in three steps. One, two, three. So my drawing is imperfect. Had it been a little bit more perfect, this would have been easy to see, but it really is three steps, three B steps to D from this point. So it's minus 2A plus 3B, possibly the most complicated linear combination that we've encountered while working with decomposition problems. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Perfectly geometric, we use our geometric intuition to arrive at these numbers. Here is another way to do it. And this is a very nice way, it's an algebraic way, and it will also help us with the example that we'll consider in the next video. Here is how uh, you can think about it. Think of a vector B, think of the vector B. It lies on the line connecting A and D. Now we have seen a situation like that before. We were considering all possible combinations of two vectors such that the coefficients add up to one. And we determined that all of those vectors, the tips of all of those vectors, lie on the line connecting the two vectors. And when all of the weight went into one coefficient and not at all into the second, we would be right at one of the vectors that got the entire weight, that got the coefficient of one. And at the opposite end of the spectrum, 
when that coefficient was zero and the other coefficient was one, we would be at the tip of the other vector. Now, what linear combination of A and D gives B? So we're going to go after B. Our ultimate goal is D, but we'll get B as an intermediate result because it's easier to see from this arrangement. And then we'll manipulate the result algebraically to get D. Now, B is closer to A, so the coefficient of A will be greater. And we can also quantify that precisely. It's twice as close to A as it is to D. So had it been here, it would be half of A and half of D. But being here, twice as close to A as it is to D, it has to be in proportion 1 to 2. And the coefficients have to add up to 1. So it's got to be 2 thirds and 1 third. And it's 2 thirds of A and 1 third of D. So let's write it down. B equals 2 thirds of A and 1 third of D. And you will notice we're almost done here, but I just want to point out that in both approaches to figuring out D, we really relied on our training in evaluating linear combinations. Whether I did the geometric sorts of, sort of thinking or pursued it algebraically, both approaches rely on our experience with linear combinations. So I'm once again emphasizing the point that if you want to be good at the inverse problem, which decomposition is to linear combinations, you have to be really good at the forward problem. So if you find yourself, if you're finding yourself struggling with this just a little bit, it's a signal to go back and work with linear combinations a little bit more. Now, from here, we can get D rather easily, algebraically. Now, another example of algebra helping geometry. How would we do it? Multiply both sides by three and move this term to the left-hand side. And what we're getting is that D equals 3B minus 2A. 3B minus 2A, exactly as before. So there are two ways to get D, which is nice because this was the hardest of the four examples on the board, and now we're done with it. Let's move on to the next vector, E. Well, E is very similar to C. It's actually opposite of C. So you can repeat the same logic as we did before, this time considering B minus A. Points in the right direction, but it's too short, so we better double it. So it would be 2B minus 2A. Or you can simply compare E to C and realize that it's 2B minus 2A, which can be written this way, minus 2A plus 2B. And just like that, we're done with our third more complicated decomposition example. Let's move on to the last one. We have F. F is right here. The easiest of them all because it points in the opposite direction and has the same length as A. It's simply minus A. And it's just another example of a situation where we only need one of the vectors. So it gets the appropriate coefficient and the other one gets the coefficient of zero. And there you go. We are now done with four more decomposition examples with geometric vectors. We still took advantage of their, being, of their being arranged in a very special way. We'll continue with this kind of scenario in the next video. I would like, there are two points that I would like to make and I'll devote an entire video to those points. And then we'll consider a situation in which the two vectors A and B are not arranged in any special way. What do we do then? That's coming up. But I'm leaving you once again with the same question as before. Are these linear combinations unique? Or could there have been another way to choose these numbers to get the same results? A very important question for one of the most important discussions coming up soon.